Fugal levels go up and insulin levels go down. I believe that is when autophagy levels are actually have started. And that really kind of goes back to how long does it take for you to break down your glycogen storage. So it really depends on what your diet was beforehand. What's up fasters, Dr. Legrand here, here for another fasting video. And today we are going to talk about autophagy. So let's get started. So in this video, I want to talk about five different things when it comes to autophagy. One, what is autophagy? Two, what does autophagy do for the body? Three, how to trigger autophagy? And four, what stops autophagy? And then five, how long do you need to fast to actually start autophagy? So let's first just talk about if you guys don't know what autophagy is, if you're new here on this channel and have not subscribed already and want to know more about fasting, fasting tips, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any other future fasting videos that we do here on this channel. We talk about everything about fasting. So about autophagy, if you guys don't know what autophagy is, basically essentially it is something that was won in the Nobel Prize recently, but it has to do where basically it's cells eating old cells, especially when the body is under a amount of loss of stress where it's uh, nutrient deficient and starts eating away a lot of unnecessary cells and regenerating new cells. So simply put, that is what autophagy is. So what does autophagy do for our body? Why is this so important? Why have you maybe heard this buzzword when people actually do fasting? Uh, well, really simply put is that autophagy, when it's increasing, especially when the body is in an amount where there's no nutrient, it'll start eating old damaged cells. It also will recycle our nutrients, which is really good for homeostasis. So recycling those nutrients in our body is really necessary. It will remove old cell proteins which is also very important when we have unnecessary scars, non-essential proteins to be able to remove that. And I've talked about in this in some of my other videos about how fasting can actually remove old scar tissue. Well, autophagy has to do a lot with that. It also will remove old cellular waste. So any kind of unnecessary cells in our body, it will remove that and use it as energy in the body. And why that's important when removing you know, old cells and the body can use it as energy, so especially when you're going through a fasting state, is that your body can rely a lot on these non-essential proteins and these unnecessary cells for energy for the body. It also can remove organelles that are certain cells in our body, like such things like mitochondria, so damage mitochondria that aren't necessary in the body and that we can also use for energy. What's also another great thing is Autophagy can be used for infection control. So if there is any infections in the body, it can get rid of a lot of the infection and have better control in the body when it comes to infections or bacterial growth. So there's definitely a lot of different autophagies in the body. And I'm talking more about macro autophagy when it comes to also getting rid of fat cells, unnecessary fat cells, unnecessary proteins, but it also can have control of infections in the body. So what triggers autophagy? Well, you've already kind of probably heard of me talk about it already from the beginning is fasting is definitely one way of triggering autophagy because what it is essentially how autophagy is triggered is when there is nutrient deficiency in the body and the body knows it needs to get its energy from other sources. So it'll increase the autophagy, which essentially is getting rid of old cells. Really a great process for detoxifying the body but another way that autophagy is triggered is through cell stress. So a lot of different stress. And of course, fasting is a way to put a lot of stress on the cells. Um, but that is another way of basically essentially triggering autophagy. So now on the opposite, what stops autophagy? Well, pretty much essentially anything that increases insulin levels. So pretty much any food will stop autophagy, especially carbs. Carbs are kind of known the highest to increase our insulin levels. And when that happens, that will shut down autophagy. But also another interesting uh, you know, protein called mTOR, which is a particular protein that senses nutrients in the body. It's kind of a sensor to kind of see, okay, is there nutrients in the body? So if it senses nutrients in the body, so if we eat anything like carbs, proteins, even fats, it will shut down autophagy because it knows it can utilize that nutrients and essentially the body doesn't have to use autophagy to use to break down unnecessary cells for energy and it can start using that nutrients. Another thing that can shut off autophagy is growth and proliferation in the body. So if there's any 
cell growth, growth or proliferation in the body that can shut off autophagy. There usually has to be some kind of nutrients to obviously have that happen. But another thing that can shut off autophagy is energy. So if people think, you know, when you're exercising that can shut off autophagy, not necessarily in every aspect because yes, mTOR can increase during exercise because obviously it's trying to utilize that nutrients that it can get but it doesn't have to, it doesn't shut off everywhere. So things such as like, you know, the liver and unnecessary fat cells, it doesn't shut off autophagy, but maybe for the, the muscle cells, essentially when it's trying to utilize that nutrients and, and human growth hormones go up, that can be an essence where autophagy can be shut off, but not everywhere else in the body. So the last thing I want to talk about is how long do you need to fast in order to meet the levels of being in autophagy? Well, there is no concrete science of like, okay, this is how long specifically you need to be fasting to hit autophagy levels. There is some speculations where, you know, it's probably rough around 24 or even 48 hours, somewhere around there where 48 hours is actually the peak moment of the highest levels of 400% levels of autophagy. But it really does depend on the person because remember how I talked about before, insulin levels high insulin levels is what shuts off autophagy. So we have to go back to really depleting the glycogen storage that we store in our liver and our muscle. So essentially when I believe glucagon, which is something that is the opposite of insulin, is what is breaking down our fat cells. When those elevate levels elevate, glucagon levels go up and insulin levels go down, I believe that is when autophagy levels are actually have started. And that really kind of goes back to how long does it take for you to break down your glycogen storage. So it really depends on what your diet was beforehand. So if you were on a very high carb diet before you start fasting, it might take you 48 to even 72 hours before you actually meet levels of autophagy. Now, if you're on more of a keto diet where it's more high fats, because that doesn't elevate insulin levels as much as like proteins and carbs do, then you will probably be able to reach autophagy levels within you know 20 plus hours within that time frame. Now, if you are something like high proteins, high fats, or higher proteins and maybe low carbs, maybe 24 plus hours. So it really just kind of depends on what your diet was beforehand. But the more you start doing intermittent fasting and then deciding to do long fasts, you'll be able to reach autophagy levels at a faster pace if you kind of start in, start implementing intermittent fasting as more of a lifestyle. So it really does, that's why I say it does depend on the person because it really depends how much your glycogen storage has in your liver and your muscle tissue to begin with to really determine when do you start really getting into autophagy levels. And you can measure your glucagon levels, you know, from bubble work, but it can be expensive isn't really necessary. You just kind of just determine when you start getting in ketosis by doing the urine dipstick. If you find that you're in ketosis, you're most likely for sure in autophagy, you know, state. So that's a good way to kind of determine it too. And just trying to have more of a diet that's more based off of, you know, high fats and low carbs will be able to help you jump into autophagy faster, as well as doing intermittent fasting in between long periods of fast where you want to get into autophagy. So that's it for today, but I'm curious what you guys think about autophagy. What have you learned? What are some things that you're curious about when it comes to autophagy and fasting? Go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up, share with your family and friends. And if this is your first time on our channel, and don't want to miss out in on any other kind of fasting tip videos or any fasting science videos, go ahead and hit this subscribe button over here. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any other future videos. Also, we'll leave some other links here of other fasting videos that we do have that you can check out if you have not seen them already. And then until next time, this is Dr. Legrand signing out. Thanks. Bye.